So when you, you start thinking about aging, you always have to think about how old you want to age your uh, yourself or your character, your performer. If we're going to do an old age, let's say like 80 or 90, because why not go big, right? When we first start, you usually start with a foundation shade about one shade lighter than yours, because some of the rosiness of your skin gets sucked out a little bit and it gets thinner. So you'd start with something one shade lighter. You're just gonna lay that foundation in. I'm gonna lay her foundation in pretty quick. And then I'll do some of this on me and some on this form because unfortunately these mannequin heads are great to do demos on, but they don't make any facial expressions. I'm going up and onto her lip. So I start from the top and work my way down, just like the other ones. Unlike our uh, contours when we're working with those, I tend to start with the low lights and the reason I start with low lights are they're really easy to find, right? So if you have a nice base of foundation already on your um, face and you start manipulating your face, your makeup's gonna crease, so you're gonna be able to see that a little easier. So I'm gonna take my low light brush and charge it up so it's nice and flat. And I'm gonna use my face on her to see where those wrinkles are. So if you're going on yourself, you're gonna take your flat brush and just lay them right in that fold. You're nice and flat. But you lay them right there, and then you can relax your brow and see, and you just go back and forth and see where they're at. I'm gonna use her low lights. The other thing we wanna make sure we don't lose is the same uh, contours we had last time. So that temple low light, I'm gonna lay in. Honor, so you still have that low light on your temple. You're still going to do the sides of the nose and pull it up and in. But this time, you go to do the sides of the nose. You're also going to play, and instead of trying to get all these teeny, teeny ones in here, I just want a couple of those really good ones. Because you want to go where your face really moves when you're then performing on stage when they make one of those faces, that's where that crease is naturally gonna fall. So instead of doing all these little ones, I'm just gonna choose a couple of these bigger ones. Nice flat brush from the eyebrow up, the eyebrow up. Some of these. Um, and maybe, let's say there's one strong crease. Got to do her other low light. So she's gonna have her typical low lights. But if you have these low lights already here on the side of either of your nose and you smile, you want these low lights to kind of work in where these guys are into that line. So if you notice my low lights on the side of the nose, you can see it where it crunches, I'm gonna make that a shape. Just like if I make a stinky face, these nasal labial, the bottom of the nostril, you really want to carve out around that nostril into where that smile line is. So we're going to pretend like she can smile. You'll find with aging, some of these lines almost feel like shapes. So this, the shadow almost becomes a triangle in here, right? There's a lot of it in there. There ends up being a little more around here where the mouth is. And a lot of times this isn't a hard line. It'll be a line maybe to your mouth or maybe it breaks up and this will be a secondary one. So you have to play with where it hits. So mine kind of ends here and scoops around my cheek. Um, I think if she were to really be able to smile, she might have one that comes from here a little more than I do. This is where if she's 90, playing with this divot under the nose might make sense, right? Because it's going to protrude forward a little more. And under the chin. And again, this almost becomes a shadow line shape under that lip. And then these gels, I'm gonna take some of her cheek, or she has nice flat cheeks, much more flat palette than I do. So I'm not gonna even shadow in where that cheekbone is. If you're 100 years old and you want, if you're really thin, you can shadow all this in so it feels really gone. Her face doesn't feel like it'd have that. So my face, I'd probably go whoop, whoop, 
and it, this would all sink in. The other thing is pulling in for those jowls. She probably is gonna have a pretty good jowl. If you smile when you go back like that, she might even get an extra one here. This line, it's probably gonna feel pretty round because this bulbousness, you can start to feel that. Yeah, you can see where those shadows start to hit. And sometimes you have one, sometimes you have two in there. The other good one, any of these, let me get some on mine. So going in here and figuring out where those lines are gonna live on you, just take that paintbrush and then you can figure out where they are. And again, they don't tend to be really strong, not always fully connected lines, but you can lay it in by going back and forth and just playing with it. I think figuring out these jaw lines, I can play with where I see this cheek would come down, where this chin would be. Probably right here. And give her a couple extras. If you ever have a really useful performer and you uh, want to age them on stage, one of the first things you want to hide is the neck. One of the first things to show age is always going to be this neck area. So if you put a scarf on them or a mock turtleneck, sweater that comes up high, that's going to really help hide that youthfulness all through here. We talked about that gaunt neck. Finding that divot here and finding these guys. The brush sometimes, I have lotion here because I knew I was going to probably end up having to use myself for an, a neck, but if you use a brush you can get those lines in and then can feather them out. But then you can fade all of these out a little bit. And the other thing that helps is finding the connection points between where these shadows are and these shadows. If we're looking at eyes and we have the shadows here, we're going to then come into where this naturally is going to bag the bottom of this orbital socket. You'll also get some, you're going to have a highlight where your eye kind of pooches out, but where it goes in, you're going to have a low light and a low light. And depending on how your eyes work, because every face is a little different, Usually on a big stage, I only do one of these. If we're really aging someone on a smaller stage, you can do that second one. You have these guys here. If you put your thumb here and push gently down, that's going to help figure out where that bag of the eye is. Do you see how that suddenly droops a little bit right through here? So hers would probably be right. Because that going that way, maybe some crow's feet right there. But I'm making that low light go right into that, and then that wrinkle be there. I'll lay it in really quick on the other side. You're going to go back with your highlights. So again, I'm gonna use a nice flat brush and start with the top. So wherever you have a deep crease on either side of that crease is gonna be that highlight. So if your low light's here, if your low light's here, your highlight's gonna be on either side. So where that lower light is, highlight on your forehead is either side. And I've gotten into the habit of sometimes my low light extends a little further, sometimes my highlight does, right, to just make it a little less even. But wherever you have that crease straight in, it's going to be either side. Now we have these temples, same thing, we need to do our normal highlights. And I usually do my uh, wrinkles first, that way if you have a wrinkle that goes into it, you know what you're highlighting around. So the furrow brow, since it's a deep crease, either side, which is going to play in nicely because you need the highlight down the center of the nose. Definitely need your highlights on top of your nostrils. 
And I just set this right underneath this eye where it bulges out. You're gonna do a little highlight underneath there. The top of this guy is gonna be a little bit of a highlight, which takes the place of that brow highlight, right? Cause that all is just sunken. Top of your, yeah, these guys, and they're gonna blend up. And on the flip side, do you have a crease here? You don't want the highlight on this side, right? Because this is all gonna fade into shadow under here. This is the highlight that's blending up. Depending on how much real estate you have here, sometimes if you're at a highlight, if you had your highlight and low light on your cheek, this is where these come into play. So I tend to, on a fuller face, just use that highlight for myself and skip that low light because you're gonna have a highlight already on either side of this crease, the bag underneath here, either side of your crow's feet. Start having lots of stuff going on in here. So under that bag, right, because if you smile, that plane comes forward. You can do a little bit of a highlight on either side of that lip. Highlight on the chin. This line tends to be right here. I leave that to go into shadow. This becomes a lot of highlight. So like on me, I'm gonna charge up a highlight for me. So for me, I would go right on top of those tendons, right on top of that clavicle. And not necessarily the whole way. I'm trying to find the hottest spot and let it fade into things. The clavicle. And I tend to blend with a slightly bigger brush when you're dealing with bigger areas down here. So I'm gonna, do my highlight blending first. And I'm not going to side to side, right? Because this is a long line, this is a long line. You can do it with a smaller brush, it just takes longer. If I was being a little less afraid of getting on my shirt, I could probably go back in with a little low light in here. But I think she's actually gonna be harder to blend than a real face because if you're blending on a real face, right? I laid these guys in. And this is especially when you do a small stage, we do even more. I cheat, and by cheat, I mean I use my time well. And I charge up a highlighted sponge. I go really as hard as I can, and if you can't hold it, or if you're working on somebody else, you can hold that. And I go right on, over top of those. Because that is gonna, you can see how deep that one wrinkle really is. I kept thinking, oh man, I really didn't get my brush very well. But it's a really deep wrinkle. Now I'd probably, when I relaxed and I went into a mirror, I'd probably fine tune it a little bit. But if you charge up with a highlight, you can go in and get those really fast, right? Especially if it's a small stage, it's pretty much how. Now on a face that doesn't move, <laughs> I can take my wedge, and I'm gonna twist and pull in. And I'd ask her to furrow her brow so she doesn't lose these dark lines. That's why I said it's a little easier on a real face. But what I'm doing with these is I'm going side to side on them instead of up and down, right? Because that's where those creases are. So you wanna think about what direction the creases are going. Even when it's not a real person, I find myself making the faces I want somebody to make. <laughs> because it's usually gonna be blending more of the highlight on them and letting that low light really live in there. So these furrow ones, right, I, I start from the bottom and I go in the direction that they're creating. Blending around, so it's same thing, right? I'd have her smile. So you'd really get those in that smile area. But you see how much highlight we end up with between the nasal labial and underneath the, you end up with so much, I usually avoid even bothering with that cheek. You just end up, everything ends up looking ashy. 
exile. See that one where it's gonna live. This little guy is almost impossible. You'd ask your person or you wanna look up yourself doing this and take a little brush to get into there. And this is one of the few places, this highlight right here, this highlight wants to stay pretty hot across the top of the cheek. I overblended and blend down because this ends up being a pretty hard line. The jowl, blend the cheek, blend the divot. And just like when we were doing basic contours and we we're blending, I'm grabbing it and blending up. I'm grabbing, I'm twisting, going up. Grab, twist, go up. Pretty hard line there. Under the neck, side to side. And then you start, find a clean spot on your wedge, and go back. And most of your low lights, if you've been manipulating your face and blending as you go, telling it to move around, most of these low lights start to get blended in their own way. Smaller areas, I just take my brush and go back and get creating these little shapes. Grab and blend down. The laugh lines, you wanna be right in there and blending down. On their lip is a pretty small area. Just noticed I missed a highlight over here. So on a big stage, you know, I could go back and go, oh, maybe next time I do this, maybe I didn't want that one. Or maybe she is really much older. If I was really pushing a masculine face, this uh, forehead ridge might want to protrude a little more, right? So eyeliner, it depends on your character, right? So if she's dying in a nursing home or a homeless person, I mean, probably doesn't have eyeliner on, right? But if she's that fabulous lunch lady, then you really have to, right? I tend to do this whole makeup, set your aging and then decide, all right, so where is it gonna go on top? That's when powder comes into really handy, right? Like if I'm just gonna do blue eyeshadow on a 90 year old lady, um, powder is gonna go on much nicer over top of this person and lipstick, cause we haven't talked about the lips. So if we're in a small stage, my favorite thing to do is to do a really dark lip. You can be pretty messy about it. And this is like dead from the crypt kind of lip. You can do your low light there, then charge up your highlight and pucker up your mouth. And you suddenly have a really old looking mouth, right? You're gonna see where all those creases are. And if she's a lunch lady who smoked for another 20 years, these creases get even deeper. And then you can do, I'm not gonna be able to see it in the uh, screen well enough. You can take these creases and continue it down. That is a little more detailed for a small stage, but even this on a big stage is really good. Or if you then wanna do a lipstick, right? You'd set all this makeup, you'd kind of apply your lipstick in the same way. You charge up your lip color, you'd pucker up and set it. And you still get all those nice dark creases on everything. If you wanna do, I'll guess. Let's say she has a couple of these little spots, right? We're gonna give her a little lip color. She still is concerned about looking good in her old age. It's probably the one time I'd say you can get away with not lining your lips if you don't want to, because if it bleeds a little bit on you, it's not the worst thing. So I'm gonna set her face really quick. I'm gonna take my sponge, charge it up, and I'm using it over my sink. So you're gonna rub it together one way, rub it the other the other way, knock off any of that excess, and set all that makeup. And you're making sure you get it all the way down. Anywhere you put makeup, you wanna make sure you're setting the whole face. But your rouge, tip your brush, you're gonna knock it in. And this is 
true for a guy's face, a woman's face, even if um, they don't have makeup, you're still gonna wanna bring a little color back into that cheek. You wanna bring a little color back into that jawline, literally going over that jawline, because this is where all your, because otherwise this highlights wash you completely out, probably a little over the forehead, a little down the nose, but that's gonna bring a little life back. Now, if, if I wanna be 90 years old over here, I'm probably not gonna be adding a whole heck of a lot of blush, maybe mixing your blush with a little bit of your powder. Um, if you're dealing with, I'm going back to see where I've lost my highlights. So you still wanna make sure you're doing your mascara. You're still gonna wanna line that eye. And the other thing that you have in your kit, it looks like a mascara wand. This is hair white or ivory. The best thing you can do is then go back through your eyebrows and hit a little bit of that eyebrow. And if you have an eyebrow brush, you can put some of this on there and go, go back in. And if you go against the way the eyebrow wants to go, it's going to help make it look even better because as you get older, eyebrows get wiry and grow differently. So if you suddenly make them rake in a different way, you're going to help them be like what I call crazy scientist brows. And that's going to help add into it a whole heck of a lot. And then doing the temple or right here, wherever you want those stress points to be, are going to play into it a great deal. And sometimes, because if someone's really pale, let's say they're really, really blonde and their brows are blonde, adding white's not gonna help. So you almost wanna do the exact opposite, right? So if you're really pale and you want someone to, even if it's gray hair, if you put a little bit of darkness in there with your mascara, with straight mascara, you can help make it get that dimension, right? Contra that contrast is gonna give you a lot of interest. So, and then it's just going back and checking your work. It's kind of fun. Good, bad eyeshadow. You can cut that crease a little deeper if you want in there. Throw a scarf on her, put a crazy like red and purple hat. <laughs> She's ready to go out. If you have questions, shoot them to me and I'll answer.